legit spent all of this week like fantasizing about going home. I had so much to talk about. There were so many things I was beginning to notice about Baldur's Gate 3 and the Schilling campaign and the Metacritic scores. There was so much material to cover, so much to go over. I wanted to come home. I wanted to do a Chiller 7. I wanted to go over it. I wanted to like expose everyone involved in this situation. I wanted to do so much, but because I have a real life, because I am so busy, I couldn't do anything more than do like a handful of update videos. And I think some of them might have been pre-recorded. So I was not available to cover Baldur's Gate 3 at the height of its popularity. And now a whole week later, it is already forgotten. Ooh, it seems like the show money has run out. Like Baldur's Gate 3 has suddenly just dropped off the face of the earth. Nobody's talking about it anymore. More and more people are beginning to notice the problems, the glitches, the issues with the game uh, from a structural level, from a gameplay perspective, from like, a, you know, a storytelling perspective. The game is layered and layered with problems that the initial wave of Metacritic scores conveniently did not address. And like... It really does feel as if um, what happened was that this massive RPG came out that was relatively niche, that wasn't all that popular. A, a bunch of people latched onto it, you know, a, a bunch of niche enthusiasts latched onto it. Oh, this is this is going to be the game of the year. This is the best thing I've ever played this year. And then, like, normal audiences caught wind of it, and, uh, you know, the Metacritic score is slowly trickling down as, like, People outside of the niche, outside of, like, D&D &D enthusiasts are, like, playing through the game and starting to realize that, like, yeah, it's really not that good compared to other games out there, right? You know, this happened with, like, the House of Fata Morgana because a lot of people accused me when I uh, posted that, like, 100 Metacritic score for the House of Fata Morgana. Like, they said it was fake, but no, it wasn't fake. There was a, t a period of time in which the House of Fata Morgana was the most highly reviewed title on metacritic period across all platforms across all genres across all mediums like the house of Mar fata morgana stood tall as the only visual um piece of uh, piece of media that had a perfect 100 points right why was that because like only three people reviewed the game right and the same thing happened with baldur's gate 3 initially like right out of the gate you know a handful of developers uh, a handful of like corrupt publishers came out and gave the game perfect scores like ignoring all the problems ignoring all the issues ignoring the fact that there are better games out there in order to push this agenda that this was the uh, the best game ever made and now that like it's been a couple of weeks now that more people are finishing up their reviews and like you know playing through the game and starting to realize that this game does have problems that metacritic score is slowly coming down as of right now it is at a 96 and i think when the next uh the next couple of reviews coming out i, I could see it dropping as low as like 94 right like it will no longer be like the most critically acclaimed game of 2023 even though it never was, right? And, like, that's the thing about this. That, that's the only reason I talked about this game at all was because so many people came into my comment section like, oh, Baldur's Gate 3, it's more it's more highly reviewed than Zelda. It's going to outsell Zelda for sure. And I, I just kind of laughed at its face. Like, if it wasn't so blatant, if it wasn't so ridiculous, if it wasn't so absurd, like, I probably wouldn't have talked about this game at all like this game is going to like fall by the wayside when like by the time super mario bros wonder and starfield comes out like i honestly am not i'm not even sure like forget like not winning game of the year like at this point like seeing how quickly it's fallen off like i wonder if it's even going to get nominated you know like that's one of those situations where i'm just kind of like this game came out was talked about and was just tossed aside so quickly like i really feel as if like the debate what it comes right down to it is going to be between Starfield and, like, Zelda. And, like, Starfield only because it's a big AAA game. Like, really, there's just nothing else, right? Like, I, I, I talked about this earlier today when I released a video statement about how, like, the – about how the industry is trying to find something that can beat Zelda. You know, they threw out Hogwarts Legacy. They threw out Final Fantasy XVI, Street Fighter VI, Diablo IV. They tried everything right and nothing is sticking nothing nothing is touching zelda's numbers diablo 4 has already fallen off the face of the earth everyone hates it right you know that had a big shilling campaign too right like these things had big a lot of momentum coming out but if the game isn't good if it doesn't keep people invested people aren't organically going to keep talking about it and that's the problem we've been seeing with like non-nintendo gaming lately is that the only time people talk about non-nintendo gaming 
they're talking about review scores. They're talking about sales numbers. They're talking about like how many viewers it has on Steam. They're talking about like concurrent players. They're talking about like Game Pass. Like they're doing everything they possibly can to avoid the elephant in the room and talking about how these games are inferior to what Nintendo is putting out right now. And I, I said this when Baldur's Gate 3 came out. Um, Fire Emblem Three Houses is a better game, right? Like, if you want a game with a more complex story, with better characters, with, like, you know, a darker theme, with, like, you know, better gameplay in general, like, play Fire Emblem Three Houses. Like, it's better than anything Baldur's Gate 3 does. And, you know, that didn't come out this year, but that is that is an example of a game on Switch that, like, stomps the shit out of anything Baldur's Gate ever did, right? It destroys it completely. And Baldur's Gate 3 is just one game, right? So when you compare Fire Emblem Three Houses and you you know you realize it has a sequel, it has like a direct sequel in Three Hopes. It has um, a new entry in the mainline Fire Emblem series and Engage. It has like previous games. It has like you know retro games like the original uh, Fire Emblem Seven and Shadow of Light. Oh, Shadow of Light. What, what is it called? Shadow of Light. What am I talking about? Like the first one that that was on the eShop for a bit. You know, we're gonna get more releases. People are talking about a Fire Emblem Four remake. Like the Fire Emblem franchise, it is simply bigger than than um than anything these people can throw out, right? Like Baldur's Gate Three next year will be completely forgotten. We'll never get a sequel. Like as uh, as well received. Like. Uh, the Shinling campaign is over, and the game is just going to fade into obscurity. While games like Fire Emblem, games like Animal Crossing, games like Splatoon 3, they will just continue getting more and more popular as the years go on. And this kind of goes into what I've been saying for a long time when it comes to, like, gaming influencers and the YouTube sphere. Like, these people are not controlling every anyone. Like, they are not able to influence anyone's opinions. If you're stupid enough to watch Angry Joe and take everything he says completely seriously, that means you're just a sheep. Like, you don't – that means you're, like, not – that means you're, like, not forming your own opinion. You're not going out and, like, playing all these games that he's not talking about. It means you're just blindly following this individual with no real understanding of what's actually out there. It is not possible – for the gaming influencers to control everything because all the games they want to push are the games that coincidentally nobody actually wants to play. You'll see these people like talking about like, oh, Rage Shadow Legends, best mobile game I've ever played. Go play it now. And then like in the actual content, the stuff that people they actually want to watch, that people actually want to watch, like they never seem to bring up Rage Shadow Legends at all, right? Same uh, same situation with Baldur's Gate 3. There are corporations that are throwing money around that are capable of, like, hiring these massive shield campaigns of organizing, like, of organizing, like, uh, this facade that these games are super popular and successful. But at the end of the day, like, it, it just doesn't amount to anything real. Like, it doesn't amount – like, it's never, ever going to lead – into a situation where they're going to outsell Zelda, Mario, Pokemon, Animal Crossing, or even, like, Splatoon or Fire Emblem, as I mentioned. Like, we're reaching that point where, like, the biggest, most coordinated shilling campaign in the world is not being – is not all that effective against the general audiences because the general audiences are increasingly becoming more critical of these e-celebs. They're becoming more critical of the companies, and if you actually try and play the games every single time – you will be disappointed. And I know a lot of people who bought into the hype of Baldur's Gate 3, played it, and then realized it was complete crap, right? That is not an unusual occurrence right now. Like, you know, the same thing happened with Elden Ring. The same thing happened with uh, Hi-Fi Rush. The same thing happened with, like, Cyberpunk 2020, uh, 2077. Like, the same thing happened with, like, all these other games that have come out completely broken, completely unfinished, and can't compete with what Nintendo is doing. Like, the pattern repeats itself so often that it's very difficult for me to believe that anyone will continue to follow, uh, fall for this indefinitely. At the very least, they'll stop playing these kind of games, right? More and more people are going to start shifting away from these, from these kind of AAA products and start like looking for alternative ways to find like recommendations. Like they're gonna find people they actually trust. Okay, they're gonna find people like me who are like adamant about like what we like and. Uh, what's out there, and they're going to discover crazy things that they've never even heard of before. You know, on this channel now, I'm talking about stuff like Grim Grimoire, I'm talking about The Legend of Zelda Oracle of Eight, uh, the, uh, the, the Oracle games, I'm talking about, like, Fire Emblem, I'm talking about, like, 
Pokemon Stadium. You know, all this crazy, incredible stuff that still holds up to this day. The original TMNT, uh, Shredder's Revenge, the, the new one that I'm playing, like, all the TMNT games now. There are so many great, amazing games that I'm talking about on this channel all the time that it's very difficult for me to believe that anybody who watches this channel would ever be interested in Baldur's Gate 3, especially since I saw this happen in real time. Uh, nobody in my real audience, that is the people who actually like and enjoy my content, nobody in my real audience cared about Baldur's Gate 3 at all. Like, they overwhelmingly supported me in my uh, in my crusade against this game, and uh, now that the uh, the Shilling campaign is over, now that the Metacritic score is going down, now that the the sale uh, people are aware that the sales numbers aren't as high as they said it was, like now that they're aware that the game ha games have problems, like not once did I ever feel as if my real audience was citing against me on this. And I'm a YouTube partner now, you know, I have a thousand subs. I have people who listen to me about this topic. And more and more, there's going to be more people just like that coming on board and calling you people out on your nonsense. Like that, the Baldur's Gate controversy was complete nonsense. You know, I saw through it right away, but like I had to address it because so many people were like being bamboozled by it and the, the steampunks were getting aggressive and like, you know, people were trying to say it was like a game of the year contender. Like, no, no. Just like Hi-Fi Rush, just like Final Fantasy 16, this game was a complete disappointment.